dear friend, and welcome into Forte Catholic. I am Taylor Stroll, and this is my co-host, Olivia Newton-John. Olivia, how are you doing today? I am well. How are you, Taylor? I actually just watched, you want to hear what I learned? This is, you, you can make fun of me for this, as the millennial. Yay! Um, I'm we the were, millennial. We yeah. were watching, <laughs> we were watching uh, Rocket Man. Yes. About about Elton John. Yes. On vacation, like I I, I went on vacation. We're gonna talk about vacation, but we have to start with the Olivia Newton John story. Here's the thing. Elton John, I knew yes. that he was very flamboyant. We'll just leave it there. And but then I'm watching the movie, and I never realized that he. Well, he start, he started marrying a woman, and I was yeah. surprised by that. And then I was like, oh, that must be Olivia Newton John. You did not. And for all of my life, no. I thought that. I thought Elton John and Olivia Newton John were either siblings or married. And I was confused by that because of the flamboyancy of Elton. And I was like, oh, here's this woman. They're going to get married and they get divorced. Her name must be Olivia Newton. And it was not. And then I looked it up on Wikipedia as I watched the movie. And those two people have literally nothing to do with each other. And that's how dumb I am. Welcome into Forte Catholic, everybody. <laughs> If I told that story, you would make fun of me forever. But that's pretty funny. I never thought about the two of them being related. But, I mean, she's Australian, and he's English, so maybe. Pretty much you don't the same. Know. It's the same. <laughs> <laughs> they both like tea. I don't know. That's funny, though. But that's a good movie. Rocket Man, but it wasn't as good as Bohemian Rhapsody, I gotta say. That story well, on Queen was better. But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about your not, vacation, Taylor. It's, it's not. We are talking you about deserve- my vacation. And Tell me about it. Here's the thing. My, my first thing about the vacation, last week was the first week I did not put out a podcast or radio show. Like, it's the first week I did not put out new content in, like, over two years. How did that feel? So I thought, like, at the end of last, the last episode I did, which was two weeks ago, right? Like, right, the, the few days before we left for vacation. I ended the show with, like, you know what, people? I'm tired. I need a vacation. And I have nothing left to say. If I have nothing left to say, that means something's wrong because I'm never out of things to say. And I was like, so take it or leave it. I'm not putting out an episode last week. And you know the response I got, Olivia? What what do you think people said? I don't think anyone said anything. (laughs) Wow. You think my audience doesn't care about the show either way. I think they were like, we're good, (laughs) Tay. We're like... When it comes to marketing, you just want people to have strong opinions on you, either yeah. really for or really right, against. That's true. Either are you good. You want them to feel and, something. And you think my audience doesn't care at all. No, I think they <laughs> care. Jeez. I thought no, people I, were going to be upset, and like multiple people reached out and were like, hey, I'm glad you're taking a vacation. Aww. And, uh, and I, was really, I was really touched by that. Your little and, tiny baby Grinch heart grew two sizes. Oh, you said Grinch heart. I thought you said Groot heart. And I'm like, wait, am I baby Groot now? I'm like, what is happening? The Grinch. He has a little the tiny baby heart in a grave. Yeah. My, my heart grew three sizes that yeah, day. That's, that's, it. that's, that's it. called a medical condition that I need to go get checked out. So, um, Oh, they do care. No, they care about you a lot. You have great listeners. I do. You know you why? Really I, you know why you know that? Because why? you started a podcast with me and they're the same listeners and they're tremendous. They <laughs> I love them. Thank Talk to you. me with Liv Harrison. Talk to Go me subscribe with Liv today. Harrison. Okay, we so I, you, sir. <laughs> I I went on on this vacation. So me, my wife, my three kids, and my parents and my sisters went to Canyon Lake, Texas. Oh wow. Which someone told me, uh, one of the, speaking of the listeners, one of the listeners told me it was the only man-made lake in Texas. And then I started telling people that when I arrived and they said, nope, that lake is in the Dallas area. Yeah. So um, thanks, listeners. <laughs> <laughs> There's only one real lake, though, in the state of Texas. That is true. And it's, it's not it's, that lake. It's not the one I was at, which no. is crazy. I mean, it's just a beautiful lake. Like, my parents have a timeshare. We had, uh, like, two, like, hotel rooms next to each other like there were like many apartments next to each other it was tremendous we had to spend time this first time we saw extended family um all throughout quarantine my mom literally just texted me like this is a great time uh, that we had with our extended family we got to pawn the, uh, the kids off to to the aunts aunts and the grandparents every now and then it was good um that's awesome how long were you there we were there for a week so saturday su- uh, sunday wait sunday to through saturday Okay. Um, so, nice. um, I think that the, like, I really do feel rejuvenated. Uh, mm-hmm. like I just got to relax. I what like, 
I did as little work as, as far as I possibly could. Like I just did like a couple of podcasts that I produced, like had to go out like yours. Like you made me work on my vacation. I know. Um, I know. I'm so sad. You didn't Sorry. know because you don't care about me because you're not one of the nice <laughs> listeners because you don't listen when you're not on because you're a bad person. Um, but I pay. I give you money. You do pay. You pay for the <laughs> privilege to not listen to Fort Dick Catholic. What a novel idea. <laughs> if you too would like to pay to not listen to Fort Dick Catholic, go to fortdickcatholic.com slash donate. All donations are tax deductible. <laughs> this is a 501c3. Uh, from Texas. Um, so uh, look, we got to go. Uh, my dad got a, a new boat. But that was big enough Ooh. to hold like all of us. Like instead of just one family, it could hold like both of the families that I belong to. Right? You're so bougie and bougie. fancy, Taylor. My dad is. Um, so <laughs> we went on the boat and like my like I'm my on a boat. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me you think that. I, I think no, I didn't because I think literally everyone else there did. And it was annoying. Um, but we we went out. We got to like. Like I, I, I actually, when I was preparing for this episode, there's something that I like. I am 99% sure you've never done, and there's 1% of me that's holding out because I want it to be true. Have you ever gone, like, you know how, like, boats can, like, pull tubes and you can ride yeah. on the tube? Have you yes. ever done that? Yes. Really? Of course I have. See, like, I was hoping you would, but really I thought you were going to be like, absolutely not. Absolutely, yes. Yeah, totally. Why? Did Have Did you? Was this your first time tubing behind a boat? No, no, no. I go all the time because I, I have an athletic frame. So I, <laughs> oh, so that's what you're calling me out for. <laughs> I so wasn't my, sure my if you were adventurous. Chubby round friend. <laughs> Obviously, we didn't know if you were the tube or if you had For those of you who haven't been one. listening for a Is while. Is that Olymp what you're saying, Taylor? It was a feat. We've been talking about this for about an hour as we recorded we the show. But uh, Olivia used to be over 400 pounds, and now she weighs 70 pounds less than me. So she's, she's come a long way. <laughs> but I, but I, I, I thought you'd just be the person that would, like, no, I, like love it. I didn't know where you would be. I thought, I, like, you kind of seemed like the mom that would want to stay on the shore and watch your kids do it. And then I was like, there's, like, a 25% chance she goes on the boat and never tubes. And, like, I, like, I literally held out 1% that yeah. you'd gone to. And you, you, you've done it? Yeah, so I'm the mom that actually, like, in our house, I do, like, the, the dad, those kind of things. Like, when the kids hear their friends talking about moms and dads, they're like, yeah, my dad's so fun, and my dad does all this crazy stuff, and my mom is like, do your homework. My kids are like, that's weird. <laughs> like, <laughs> they have the total opposite of that. Like, Nathan does the laundry, and he does all the cleaning, and he does all the responsible things. And then I come in, I'm like, get in the car, kids. Like, <laughs> let's go, whatever. And I'm the one, I ride the roller coasters. I, you know, when we're at Disney, when we're at Universal, I'm the one that's right there with them. So, yeah, when we're behind a boat, Nathan's driving it, and I'm in the back. And I'm like, dude, y'all, get in. Like, let's go. So, so I have my okay. answer, but who do you think is the better parent? Oh, <laughs> uh, we're so, <laughs> listen. I make it fun. So I'm the fun parent. I can definitely say that. Nathan would not, you've met Nathan. Like he would not contest that. But yeah, I'm the fun parent. But I don't know. So I you mean, lose, we're different. is what you're saying. We're <laughs> no, by the human development. You just conceded I, defeat. <laughs> we're different parents. He's responsible. But I'm a good parent. I do life stuff. Like my kids really are connected to me as a person. So there's a lot of that that like other parents don't get to do. My kids are like, yeah, we're tight. So that's good. We have you're, fun. And you're a good come, friend to things. your kids. <laughs> no, we're not a friend yet, but we're getting there. I mean, my 17 year old, I tell you what, it's starting to get really fun. I would tell everybody with littles, it gets really amazing. You start raising these people that you're like, I want to hang out with this person. That's when I think, you know, that you're doing a good job. As a your, your 17 year old son is a cool hang. We, we've hung out like the, the uh, either the three of us or, or the three of us and your husband. And you, and you, yeah. just the two of you. Oh yeah. Th there was that one time. That one time. That boy. <laughs> Uh, we just a, a peek behind the curtain. You have said some stuff today. We, we already recorded the interview that's coming here in just a few minutes, but you have just thrown some things out that have horrible connotations. You were supposed to be home and I arrived and you were like, I'm still an hour and a half away, but my son's there and he can let you in my mansion alone. I'm like, Not that's, a mansion. That's great. So your 16 year old uh, son, you're like, is that okay? He and I interacted as least as possible until you arrived <laughs> home. <laughs> we sat, and then we all stayed up to like two in the morning and had a blast. Like this so. was bef this was before social distancing. Yeah. And I like I stayed as far away from your teenager as I could. No, Zach's cool. Six feet. He's, he's, a, cool. he's a cool kid. 
You just put me in a weird situation uh, <laughs> because that's your job, apparently. It so, worked out fine. Here's, here's the coolest thing about, about vacation and why I was able to like slow down. And I realized this like, one, while I was on vacation and I've been home for two days now, and I was really like content with what I was doing because I had fewer options of what to do. That Which sounds funny. weird because like usually people go on vacation and they want more options. Oh, like and like I mean to be fair, there's part of that, right? Like I don't usually have the option to go on a boat and go tubing. So like some of that stuff was fresh, but like most of the day, like I was I was able like my options were hang out with my kids, hang out with my hang out with my wife, hang out with my with my uh, my parents and my sisters, or and like even the stuff that was new, like we did together as a family. Um, and, and even the times, like, you know, so most of my waking hours were spent with someone in my family, right? And there, even there were a couple of times, like, we'd be really tired after, after a day. And, like, my, like, some nights, my wife and I, we watched Rocket Man, like we were talking about earlier. Uh, we watched a couple of other movies, which was, which was nice. Just Sam and I, it was funny because we were in the, 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 the hotel room and the kids were asleep. So I had my AirPods. I had one AirPod in one side. She had one AirPod in the other. And we watched movies on an iPad. <laughs> it was Aww, great. Um, that's really cute. But there, there was a couple of nights where, like, both of us were tired. We just, like, I just want some, like, me time before I go to sleep. P perfectly fine, right? Um, but even then, there were less options. I had my iPad so I could watch a show. And I, and I had my, like, my Nintendo Switch. So I brought one game system. When I'm at home, I have three gaming systems. I have work. I have my office. I could always be doing something more for the show or for, for the business, or I could always be doing other things, or I could be working out at my gym, or I could be with my kids. Like, there's usually so many options. And, like, a lot of times, like, in, over the last three or four months, because I've been home more, because I have so many options, I don't decide to do anything. Like, I've just sat on the couch for, like, an hour, hour and a half, and it's completely unproductive because I'm not really resting because I'm go constantly going through what I could be doing. But when there were fewer options, like, like th those were my only options that I had. And I got to pick from four things and I was happier. It was nice. It is nice. It's kind of the whole concept of like McDonald's compared to like the Cheesecake Factory. You walk into the Cheesecake Factory and they give you a spiral. They literally give you a spiral book to choose from their menu. You go to McDonald's, you got like three choices, you know, and like, it's pretty easy. And I think, I think that's a really good point that it really takes off the pressure to where you can make a choice. Like I'm a vegetarian, which you make fun of me all the time. And when I go to a vegetarian restaurant, I almost go into like a conniption fit because I can't figure it out. I'm like, well, I don't, a salad. Like I usually I'm used to saying like French fries. Like, Give me <laughs> leaves. Yeah. There's like one thing. So to have a lot of options is actually, I think you're right. Way more stressful. And I think living today, we just have so much at our fingertips, like what you're saying, that it is hard. Even when we go on vacation, we go to like, you go to Disney World, everyone says, I'm exhausted. I just got back from Disney. Of course you're exhausted. That was, that's not a vacation. That's a job, you know? Right. So that's nice that you got away and you really got to, I don't know, you don't, you're not a rester, you know, you're lazy, but you're not a rester. <laughs> <laughs> Just I was like, kidding. literally, the <laughs> thought I was having at that moment was, oh, she said something nice. Oh, it's ruined. There it is. It's ruined. <laughs> no, you just don't rest. You do. You're a hard worker. So, so you, want, you, want to, you want to hear my, my snap back to reality? Oops, there goes gravity moment on my, <laughs> on my vacation. It all ended very abruptly. I told you right before we came on. That, I like, know. My, I, like, we're happened? back home. I have all the options again. My kids are doing everything they can today to, to ruin my chill from the Remind vacation. You that they're kids boy in case you um, forgot. yeah but here's the thing here's how my vacation ended on the last day so next week it's been on my calendar for almost a year that next week I'm, I'm i'm supposed to be going to life teens camp i'm supposed to be leading worship for a life teen camp next week everything else is, has been canceled all of my other events have been canceled. my last event i usually do like four or five events a month my last event was the end of february and then this was going to be my first event since february and i've right. been looking forward to it I, I was like there's i i just assumed it was going to be canceled they didn't cancel it they put in all these covid yeah protections and stuff it's a and, lot of camps open actually yeah yeah so so on vacation they were like hey for 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 me to be able to arrive i need to take a covid test so i was out of town they're like you need to take it uh, up 10 days before no earlier because then we don't know if you got it in those 10 days but no later because it takes time to get the results 
So that meant I had to go Thursday or Friday. I tried to go Thursday, two and a half hours of research and, and making phone calls. So frustrating trying to find a place. Oh, like um, where you were because you were like in the middle where of like nowhere. Okay. Yeah. So finally I, I found- COVID I, testing on the lake. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but right before you get on the boat, they just, right. you know, they just test you. So nice. I, I go on, on Friday. I finally find one place I can do it on Friday. Um, I, like, it took, like, it took two and a half hours to get this test. This is the last day of vacation. It took two and a half oh hours. I had God. to drive 35 minutes both ways. Um, and have you, have you been tested? No, I haven't left my house. Okay. Here's, here's the thing, Olivia. <laughs> I laid down and you know, <laughs> I, I got told that it was bad and it was worse than I imagined it was going. Really? To be. So my last day on vacation, here's what happened. I finally get into this, to the, to the room. They come in with this thing and it's like, it's going to get They're Like, Hey, it's going to go uh, into your nose. And it's, it's going to like, just naturally your eyes are going to water. Have you ever, there's been, there's been a couple times in my life. I, I can think of two uh, where I was writhing in pain, right? Mm -hmm. Like uh, before a surgery that I had in high school and before a surgery or, and then, and then a football injury where I was like laying on the ground, writhing in pain, you know, like that, like your whole body's moving, all this kind of stuff. The COVID test was the weirdest thing in the world. Not the most pain I've been in because it wasn't painful. They, they were like, Hey, this isn't going to hurt. It's just going to be really weird. And your really? eyes are going to water. I'm laying on the bed. They have me lay down on the bed. They shove this thing up my nose. And they're like, hey, breathe in. So for like four seconds, I breathe in. They shove it up for four seconds. Then they're like, breathe out. They shove it up for four more seconds. Ooh. This thing is like into my brain. They're taking my brain cells out. And here's what's happening. And it's the weirdest thing in the world. I'm on the bed writhing, but not in pain. My body is just naturally reacting like, this isn't supposed to be happening. <laughs> like, <laughs> and my eyes start to water, which they told me was going to happen. They didn't tell me that my body was going to convulse. Yeah, right? And I'm like, I'm, like, I, I'm like trying to grab onto the table and all this stuff. And, and then she, she just keeps sticking it up my nose. I'm like, stop. <laughs> did they do the other nostril as well? Or they only no, did one? Just the one. I, I, I really? wouldn't have let her. Okay, I, I've never heard anyone... Explain it this way. I've never heard anyone lying down, and I've heard that it's gone in both nostrils. But have you ever had the flu test up your nose? No. Oh, well, okay. I so, need to find someone who's had the flu test and the COVID and tell me that. It, it was just... it was terrible. It was terrible. Uh, and it At least it wasn't painful, Taylor. It, it gets worse. It gets oh, worse. No. So. Oh, no. I'm, I, I uh, two days later, I'm sitting around. And I'm waiting to get my results back so that I can contact Life Teens Camp and be like, hey, so I'm, I'm like good to Sunday? go. This is Sunday? Yeah. So on, okay. on Sunday, I'm actually watching Hamilton, which we're going to talk about in the last, sec the last segment. Watching Hamilton, and I see pop up on, on, my, on my iPad that my phone's ringing. It's in the other room. And it's a 210 number, so it's San Antonio. And that's, that's around where I was to get tested. So I, I paused the show, and I sprint over there to answer the phone to answer this 210 number to see, to hear my results, to see if I have COVID or not. I answer the phone. It's the guy from Life Teen saying that the camp has been canceled due to COVID. <laughs> so I'm not Why? going. I'm like, not going. someone like, has it? A, a couple people got it. So they're canceling oh. camp. Like, which, which I saw, yeah, I, yeah. I saw coming I months ago, but I held out hope. I just, and, and then all I could think about was like, literally as he's saying that, I'm trying to be like professional and be like, oh, it's okay. Like I actually assumed that it was going to be canceled, blah, blah, blah. No worries. They're like, hey, we'll call you next year. Cool. Were you I'm, trying to be, I'm trying to be professional, <laughs> but all I can think about is me writhing on that bed. <laughs> oh and my gosh. Sure enough, sure <laughs> enough, three hours later, I get another 210 call and they're like, hey, you don't have COVID. I'm oh. like, I know I don't have COVID. I, I tricked you into giving me this test so that I could go to this camp that I'm now not going to. And it was an out-of-network facility that I had to find. So it's probably going to cost me hundreds of dollars. So all of it made me angry. And that's how my vacation ended. <laughs> the end. The end. So also, as you can tell, paper, I'm much more COVID. mellow after my vacation. Oh, my gosh. You're <laughs> as angry as ever. You need a Snickers. Oh, boy. Okay. But uh, it's okay because I don't have the COVID and I don't get to travel. My next event is in October. Fantastic. So, um Same. <laughs> but we are going to uh, we're going to take a break and we're going to come back with uh, Patrick Nevy from the Crunch Podcast and also he has a new project that he's been working on that will help you be smarter and Lord knows you need it, Olivia. We'll be right back. <laughs> oh, hey, Olivia! Long time no talk. 
Hey, Tay. <laughs> ah, gross. That's the worst introduction I've ever had to a commercial, but we're keeping it. Um, so one, one of the things that I've been doing, uh, not, it started with quarantine, but especially now that I'm doing Forte Catholic full time, I'm, I'm able to produce some more things. Um, including over on our YouTube channel. So youtube.com slash Forte Catholic. Not only do we have the show every week is there, so you can see us instead of just looking at, or just, instead of just hearing us. And for some people, I understand why you still stick with the audio version, but there is the option now to watch it on video. But also myself and other lovely people and live are all sharing talks. <laughs> uh, so I actually just released another talk. It's been interesting, like, because I can't travel and speak anymore, I'm like, hey, I have all these talks. I might as well share them with the people on the internet because I've never done that before. Um, so I actually just released one uh, yesterday and, and people seem to really enjoy it. I think they just, I, I think people just miss me because I didn't put out content for 11 days. But anyway, uh, you can go subscribe and see all of the stuff we have going on over there on youtube.com slash Forte Catholic. Welcome back to Forte Catholic. I am still Taylor Sroll. That is still Olivia Harrison in the darkest room she could possibly find because we definitely didn't just schedule this. Uh, <laughs> and we're joined today by a, another one who is, who's a podcaster who actually, like our podcast, I think started in the same month or within a month of each other. I don't know, 2016, September? Sep yeah, I, I started in August. I I started oh, there you go. Year, so, so there you go. Uh, so you're old compared I, to us. I, you're I, old. Yeah, I, I've, I've been in the podcast game <laughs> for way longer than you have. <laughs> that voice that you are hearing if you are listening on the podcast and not seeing his beautiful face on YouTube is Patrick Nevy, which rhymes with heavy, which is how he taught me how to yes. uh, say his name correctly because he's told me in person multiple times and I've <laughs> always forgotten until just now he said it rhymes with heavy, Be think like a fourth grader. And now he yeah. finally knows me well enough to know that I think <laughs> like a fourth grader and it finally worked. Welcome to the podcast, Patrick Nevy Heavy. Man, I'm so excited to be here. How are you guys? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> we're doing great and i love like here's the podcaster thing it's like you're so great you're acting like we didn't just talk for 20 minutes which is tremendous yeah that's and how it, you're supposed to do it and it's good because the the conversation we had the previous 20 minutes isn't even going on patreon like it's and you know you know what i'm you know what even on top of that i'm not gonna reference it like some no. of our guests do i i'm gonna you know i'm not even gonna yeah that's classic podcast one. We've got a pro today, Taylor. We've got I mean, I mean, I, I'm not. I don't want to brag or boast, but I have been doing this longer than you. So that's I true. But to... but like proportionally, I've I've been doing it for a larger percentage of my life. That's true. So because <laughs> you are you are a young cat. So uh, you got to meet uh, the two of you met just just a few minutes before we started. Just now. But just you now. actually have a connection with one of our other co-hosts, uh, Father Anthony Sirapa. Uh, he, he, uh, came and plucked you from, t from Texas about a year ago, huh? <laughs> yes, he did. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so I, I, uh, I was working as a summer missionary at a uh, door ministries and, uh, I was finishing out my senior year at Franciscan, uh, the semester afterwards. And I decided to cut that year short only semester. I just shoved all of my classes into one semester. Uh, that was a mistake. It was horribly hard, <laughs> but, uh, so I was looking for employment. Uh, right after that. And um, I was between a door and finding a job in Pittsburgh. And my fiance, well, at the time, she's my girlfriend. She was like, I'm moving, I'm moving back to, to Franciscan. I'm going to finish out at Franciscan. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to stay in Pittsburgh. And so I texted Father Anthony. We were just acquaintances on Twitter. Then. Uh, we have both left the platform. And um, I was like, hey, do you have a job? And he was like, yes. And then he hired me. <laughs> <laughs> I still remember the phone call uh, between Father Anthony and I. Uh, whenever he was uh, he was spying on you, and I got to help spy. Um, oh, so, uh, either you're welcome, or what I said didn't keep you from the job. So either it's on my merits <laughs> or yours, credit. or a he combination of both. It I mean, sounds like he, it sounds like he wants to be a mystery. It sounds like he doesn't want credit or or blame. I don't. I just I just want people to think what they will. <laughs> he just wants to be a part of it. That's they all. tend to do Taylor's that. Taylor's got to be a part of it. I I work in the shadows. Uh, you know, oh. people people think I am, that I, I am just the said, night. I, I have the night. People think I just have this public face, but like what people don't remember about Batman is it's not like he was just a regular guy during the day. He 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 had a huge social life. He was yeah. running a business. So I He's mean, maybe it. it's right. He was. That's exactly yeah. right. He was kind of a big deal. Yeah. Philanthropist. He wasn't in the shadows. 
And and see, I I uh, I haven't beat because instead of being a thala- philanthropist, see, I can't even say the word correctly. That's why you can't um, be one. But I survive. I, <laughs> may, I I survive and feed my kids because of philanthropy. So yeah. there you go. <laughs> there you go. So much. There you go. There's the commonality. <laughs> Speaking so, of, pay, that's patreoncom slash Forte Catholic. <laughs> What's what's right. great, Patrick, is uh, about a month ago, uh, we actually launched as a nonprofit. So now people can give to me in multiple ways, and it's tax wow. deductible. And Interesting. It's, it's, it's a perfect time because people are like, hey, I'm not sure if I like my parish. And I'm like, I don't care. You can give me your money instead. <laughs> That's why it helps to have a co-host who's a missionary. I just donate our earnings to him, and then I did <laughs> Well, let, let, let's be fair. You work in youth ministry. So you, uh, yeah. you actually have to have other sources of income, which is actually why you're here to yes. talk about Hello. Bon- Bon Ventures Book Would you Club. like to talk about one of my other sources of income? <laughs> <laughs> I would. And uh, it's always, I, I always, you know, I, I took some marketing classes. I, I'm one class away from having a business minor. I know, very impressive. What? <laughs> How have I never heard this? Well, have you know, I once read the four hour work week spark notes. And so I am right there with you. <laughs> I'm married a marketing major so does that know Li- by live, osmosis what what you don't know patrick <laughs> is that live uh, li- like again we're going to reference something that happened before any even you were on because again oh. i'm a great podcaster because i've been doing this for a long time <laughs> but i was i was speaking with live and this is again uh, uh, just a snippet from the lost archives of what we're deleting from our conversation <laughs> before this is uh sh- live is moving from one mansion to another uh, they're, they're 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 buying a new house, and yeah. she's like, "It's not a mansion. This house isn't even that great." Anyway, here I sit in my movie theater, and I'm like, "Olivia, <laughs> it's not a mansion." He has spent the night here more than once. It's a McMansion, right? It's like oh one of those, gosh. like it's one, one of those. Ridiculous. <laughs> He's ridiculous. Don't listen to him. Anyway, listen. I've never I've never had a movie theater like within five minutes of my house, let alone in my house. <laughs> the guy who owned this house built movie theaters in Houston and he finished out the attic. It's okay. It's cool. He was resourceful. Yeah. It's That's resourceful. the thing. That's the thing. With a finished basement and a finished attic, it makes any house into a mansion. It's nuts. <laughs> There you go. I'm basically a Kardashian. That's what I, I am. Uh, one, one of the times that I spent the night in Liv's guest room, again, I needed to uh, make that very clear because you just oh kind of threw God. it out like nothing. Uh, well, the next house, you uh, have your uh, own house. Like does the house. guest room double as an office? Because if not, <laughs> no. it's a mansion. Yeah. <laughs> okay, then yeah, it's a mansion. <laughs> What's funny wait, is, wait, wait, wait. The wait. Next house. Uh, first thing, I've got to respond to what Patrick said, but uh, I, I went to Liv's house and not she had true. 18 pillows on the guest bed. I'm wow. not even rich enough to afford 18 pillows. There are five people <laughs> in my house and we have 11 pillows. But my fiance and I had to sit down and discuss the idea of getting another pillow before we get married and if it fits the budget. <laughs> That's because y'all are nine years old. I'm like, <laughs> when you finally get to 78, you get to buy a flipping pillow. Like that so, is a perk. Here's, so, the, here's, like here's the, the thing, thing Patrick. Guys. I've got to respond to what you said, because you said, does the, the guest room double as an office? And for uh-huh. those the people who have been listening to the show for the, ever since the fall know that apparently I now live in a mansion because my, my guest room does not serve as my oh, office. No. My, the, the, where I am right now, my office is the room that stores my water heater. So it's not my guest room. So (laughs) according to Patrick Heavy Nevy, I live in a mansion. (laughs) <laughs> and it stores your alcohol let's be honest why that you put your you put alcohol in a flammable studio. object in next his, to oh. a water heater no they're socially distanced they're exactly six <laughs> feet from each other and so you think right. that's a joke but i might actually no. measure it after this it looks like it's exactly six feet like and if i lay down my toes would touch the alcohol and my head would hit the water heater and i'm six two it's all oh, it's exactly that. six feet that's all true. right Okay. okay. I just okay. want to drink in there and do the show one day. I think that would be fun. Well, uh, we, we, we could, it, uh, my, except my camera does widescreen, but not up to six feet. We're only at about four and a half. Yeah. So we've got to wait a little bit more time. COVID's over. Anyway, Bonaventure's Book Club, the whole reason you're here. So oh, yes, yeah, that's right. Let's do the, let's do the business. <laughs> not thing. About okay, my so guest room. Here's the thing. <laughs> Uh, a lot of a lot of youth ministers have have their side hustle. Like Forte Catholic actually started as my side hustle, and now it's my my jobby job. Hustle. Um, now I don't have to hustle, I guess. Um, but you you've got your your side hustle here, and because every youth minister has a side hustle, most of them annoy me. 
Um, yeah. But, but yours doesn't. And I, I actually like it, even though I don't feel like I'm qualified to participate in it. You're going, <laughs> you're going to convince me of two things. You're going to, you're going to convince the listeners that yeah. it's a good thing because I think, gotcha. I think it's a good thing. I, you don't have to convince me of that. The second cool. thing is, am I smart enough to partake? You have the floor, sir. Sweet. Okay. Uh, first of all, most youth minister side hustles are annoying because they're pyramid schemes. This is not a pyramid scheme. <laughs> <laughs> he said it. He said um, it. I, I don't actually know that to be a case. It's a pyramid scheme. It's a mansion scheme. <laughs> it's a mansion scheme. This is, this is, how, I, this is how I lay the That's foundation. That's how I live here. Um, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, so for those of you who don't know what Bonaventure's book club is and why Taylor, Taylor is saying that he might not be smart enough to, uh, to partake in it, not because of his intelligence, but because of the intellect of the authors we're publishing. So uh, Bonaventure's book club, started uh, it was inspired by uh, another company that that does something similar with uh, with american literature and western literature in general but uh this is a subscription service uh where you pay sixty dollars for the year it adds out to about five bucks a month you pay essentially five bucks a month and you get a book a month uh that and that book is an abridged and adapted version of a classic work of catholic theological uh classic theological work so uh for instance the the first series that we're doing uh all the series are themed we we release them in sets of three so the first series is on grace and it includes augustine uh on grace and free will it include it includes saint thomas aquinas um treatise on grace and saint cyril jerusalem's catechetical lectures on baptism and so now you may be thinking Am I smart enough to partake in this? The answer is yes, because the the books are the books are are abridged, but they're also adapted. So the problem with reading theology, and I I, I ran into this when I was an undergrad, the professor would say, "Hey, go read these summa questions. They're available for online. They are, but in order for something to be free online, it, the translation." needs to be at least 100 years old and they talked different 100 years ago no so you, you have to yeah you have to filter out all these like hither twos and where to fours and so and and you have to like you have to break down sentences because latin just worked differently my, I'll, I'll I, I, my i have to pause you there and you can, you can continue right where you left yeah but I, I i just had this idea because Liv is saying that both of us are too young to understand the world or whatever but like uh-huh. can you imagine when people started saying hither to four and where to from and the older people before that were like, these kids these days and their slang. <laughs> Where's Urban Dictionary when you <laughs> Yeah, really. All right, please so, continue. <laughs> it's that, it's, there, was a, there, was a, there was a line in A Million Ways to Die in the West where uh, Seth MacFarlane's character is walking down the street and they're like, kids these days and their sticks and their hoops. You know, I read an article about how that's rotting their brains. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so uh, what we do is we, what we, try to, what we try to do is we try to make the, uh, the translations – not translations, but we adapt them into like a plain English translation. So the concepts are easy to digest. We, um, we, some of the, li- we took a little bit of liberties. So we, we cut up the sentences so that they're digestible. Um, some of the words are changed. So like the, the extension, like hitherto or the hence becomes therefore. So it's easier to read. Um, one of my, one of my favorite things, we also changed some of the, uh, some of the synonyms that some of the, uh, the, the Latin translators may have been a little too literal. This is my problem with Latin translation. So uh, Augustine on grace and free will, he, he quotes the creed, okay? He quotes the, the part that says, uh, come to judge the living and the dead. We all know that part, right? So Augustine is quoting that part of the creed. The Latin word is vivo, uh, living. And the word vivo could also mean something that is lively. It can mean something that, that, is, that is animated, right? And so the translator decided and stuck with this several areas. He translated Augustine quoting the creed as, Jesus will come to judge the quick and the dead. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was reminded of, uh, of Ricky Bobby's, like, you're either quick or you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> and so like, those, are, those are the kinds of things we're amending from the, from the more archaic English translations. But you're making it less so fun is what you're saying. Yeah, I'm making it less fun. <laughs> But, but also easier to read, you know? So here's the so, thing. If, if yeah, you're trying yeah. to make it less fun, here, here's what I like. The, the thing that, which is not what you're doing. It's a joke. But here's the thing. <laughs> uh, you, 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 just said, you just said two things. You're trying to make it more easily digestible. Yes. And you also said that it's $5 a month. I, I know that y'all have been promoting this thing. I have the perfect promotion for this. Are you ready? Okay. And it involves digestible and $5 a month. Is it $5 foot long? Is it a pun on $5? $5 book club. <laughs> Five. Five dollar 
I don't think that's Five copyrighted. Yeah, book club. yeah, it's not. It, and also, no. Subway's not running that promotion anymore, so I think we're right. good. It's free. And, it, and it's it. been a hundred years, so we can change the yeah. words. And everybody hates <laughs> Jared. So. It's been a hundred years in in commercial time. It's like, yeah, exactly. that was like a hundred years ago. Y'all remember when commercials Jared. used to exist? <laughs> <laughs> I just pay to make those go away now. Just yeah. them on my browser. Commercials. I can't. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, a, that's the uh, that's the that's the so Taylor yes even I don't want to say it's your even podcast Taylor even Taylor can, can be read. a part wow <laughs> Patrick like I I I always assumed you didn't listen to the show but now I know that you don't because you assume people are nice to me on my show <laughs> <laughs> I I know people aren't nice to you on your show I've hung out with you in person but I <laughs> I try to be nice to people on their show. Well, okay. So here, here's the thing. Like when it comes to <laughs> when it comes to being smart, we actually had uh, someone who I see as your counterpart, and this is my compliment to you. I think it's a compliment. We'll see how you take it. But uh, all of the Catholic podcasters hung out uh, at at SLS this past year. It's where yeah. like we, like we had you and I had met a couple years before, but this was the first time that we actually like got to spend time together and hang out. And the best thing, I think, probably the best night. We're all hanging out. We're all uh, having a drink or two or six, and then. <laughs> uh we're, like we're all having a ton of fun and then i look over and for three <laughs> hours you and our guest a couple weeks ago father harrison air are are sitting there talking about bonaventure <laughs> and yeah. benedict and all and like edith stein and i'm just like what losers like <laughs> like i'm proud of you that both of y'all are are one smarter than i am and understand those people Fair two enough, yeah. that you care enough about growing in your faith that you're talking about this but but guys we're all here hanging out and you're like well when benedict said this it's like stop it <laughs> <laughs> taylor would have thrown a spit wad at you if you had been in sixth grade with him he would oh have my gosh me. yeah <laughs> so knocked i i am and taylor. always have been a total dirt like that's just <laughs> that's just kind of my brand um someone asked me what my brand was they meant like what company do i work for like what what podcast but i was like they were like what's your brand and i was like i don't know uh nerd but approachable <laughs> um like that's, <laughs> that's, that, awesome. that's like that's what that's what i tried to do. like my on my podcast the crunch what we try to do is <laughs> there's a little subtle plug but not <laughs> uh we <laughs> what, what we try called? to do is it, the crunch oh thank the you crunch. For making, okay, yeah great we uh we try to have conversations about things that are not you know everyday things you know people don't people don't talk about spirituality in their everyday lives although they should uh, and so we have those conversations and we hope that by our conversations that models for other people how to have those conversations in their own lives for Bonaventure's book club making it portable and making it something you, you can just like have with you always it brings something that we see as very far off theology like you said something that's very far off and we make it something that can be taken with you in your pocket. So like literally all you need for Bonaventure's book club is a book, like a book that's about the size of your phone and your phone, because we have a podcast that goes along with it that will uh, expand and explain and apply the reading. So, well, so that's so, smart marketing right there. I can tell that you, have I don't know. They're not using my song, so we'll see what happens. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but you uh, need our book club and our podcast. You guys like that's it's brilliant. Great. It's great. You do. <laughs> um, all right. So how do people, how do people sign up? So right now we are, we're uh, in the midst of a Kickstarter um, and we need, we need to hit a pretty high goal to even make this happen. So right now we have over a hundred people that have signed up, but uh, we, we need 500. And so uh, this is not just something you go, oh, I think this is a good idea. I think I'll, I think I'll check this out. Uh, it's this could be gone, you know. So it, this is a this is a more of an act now sort of thing and share because, uh, you know, that whole thing. Uh, if you if you share this with two and they share that with two, that that multiplies pretty quickly. So wow, right now, you go someone's to, been to a focus training session. <laughs> I've also been to an MLM uh, training. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> Um, <laughs> second you heard reference here, to Patrick Heavy Nevy thinks focus is an MLM <laughs> <laughs> pyramid schemes for Jesus. That's what we. That's what we're that's, doing here. That's exactly. That's All true. right. So so here, here go go sign up at the Kickstarter. What what? How do they they just go to Kickstarter and search? Uh, yeah. ki link in link in the description because the Kickstarter yeah. Kickstarter has really long links. Yeah, you can Perfect. also go to at Bonaventures Book Club on Instagram to follow us, and the link is in the, the link is in the Ooh. bio. And he so. needs five. 500, 500. <laughs> 500 supporters go check it out bonaventures book club on instagram or search it into kickstarter and there's the link in the description patrick thanks so much for coming on man hey you got it, it was really patrick. fun bye Liv. so Liv, your podcast is new we mentioned it on the show it's called talk to me with Liv harrison and people need to go subscribe um 
you like I did for for many years. You have a perfect five star rating on Apple Podcasts, and I shared uh, two weeks ago that for the first time in my four year run of doing this show, for the first time ever, I had less than a five star uh, review. People, because I, I had some trolls. There were some people that went on to rate and review the show, and it dropped it down from five to four point five. So then last or uh, the last show two weeks ago. I was like, please help me and make it back to a five. And people did. That pe- a couple people went out and reviewed and rated the show on Apple Podcasts. You can find it like, wherever you find your, find, your, find your show, on your computer or your phone or your iPad or whatever. And people left reviews, and it went back up to a five. And then other people that I guess are trolls who listen to the show, which makes no sense, also heard that and went and gave it one-star reviews. So now it's back down to 4.5. So... Can, can you help me in asking the people to go leave a, a, a kind review and stop oh being mean to me? Gosh, you guys are being really big meanie heads. <laughs> there is enough ugly in the world and we're not talking about Taylor's face. We're talking about other than tap the planet. Don't add to it. He's a lovely person inside. I know you don't know, but he is. He has a heart and kind and he has a great wife and kids. Go give this man five Make stars. up the children. <laughs> and he really does have a good face. So do uh, it. Be kind. Do a good gesture. Be, give be some kind. love to Taylor. And, and I've done so much for you people. And by you people, I mean listeners of the show. We're about to hit this coming week. We're going to hit 100,000 downloads, and I only have 100 wow. ratings. Come on, people. It's like 1% of 1% of 1% of 1%. You can do it. Apple Podcasts, uh, go give it a five star review. Thanks. Alexander Hamilton. <laughs> <laughs> We're back. I'm Taylor Schroll, the host of Fuente Catholic. That is Olivia Newton John uh, Harrison Eugene. And. Uh, we're, we're, we we love having Patrick on. That was fun. But now we're going to talk about some Hamilton. Praise! <laughs> so, uh, so excited. <laughs> I know you are. This is all you've been looking forward to. And you're like a you're like a child. Like I am. in order to get you to do the things that you don't want to do, I have to hold out a, a you know a carrot out in front. You do. <laughs> and, and you're like, so I'm like I need to keep Hamilton for later. Otherwise, Liv might leave and not record the first segment with me. Peace out. <laughs> so. Um, I shared a lot in the first segment, so I'm gonna get I'm gonna get your thoughts on the old Hamilton. It just came out on Disney Plus. Uh, the entire world watched it. If you didn't, yes. you're a nerd. Um, <laughs> so, so uh, it's true. You're a big fan. I, I, I am. am a fan as well. And I, even though people are surprised because I have a music degree, yes, they're surprised by many things that I have a degree, <laughs> that it's in music, that I uh, all of the things. So, but even have a music degree. We've listed them out. There are, this, is, this is the fifth musical that I have seen that I liked, and I've seen many musicals. I'm not a big musical fan, okay. but I loved this one. Uh, why I do you know like the other four. But yeah, no, you ahead. can't. We're, this is all about you now. So okay. what, uh, okay. what did you My like favorite. about the old Hamilton? All right, here's the deal. I, I love Hamilton. I, I knew the CD. I knew the music before I went. I saw it live in Houston. I tried to get tickets in New York, and I had opportunities to see it in New York. But I just decided, you know what? I don't want to spend the money. So we waited. We saw it in, in Houston when it was here for the first time when it first came through. And my kids know all the music and we love it. And we saw it live and I walked away. And I got to be honest with you, being a huge musical junkie, which Taylor knows I am. I walked out of there saying, eh, you don't have to see it live in order to know what's going on in the musical. So I went back and I told people that because you remember that was a hard ticket. Like that was a hot ticket for a long time. And it probably still is in New York or anywhere that, that the tour is coming through. Well, not that there's ha- that's not happening now. We're currently in quarantine, but it's nice that you don't really have to see it. There's about two scenes. I, I tell people that you need to see, but other than that, you really don't. And, and you're fine. Even if you don't, however, so I got, I got to be honest when this whole Disney plus situation was happening, I was excited because I haven't left my house in almost 120 days. We're some of the rare people. We're like cave people at this point. So I was excited on the fact that there was something to you look poor forward thing to. stuck in your mansion. <laughs> I'm not talking to you right now. So, <laughs> so I was excited, but I gotta be, I gotta be honest. I was like, this is going to really be the worst because it's taped and live theater. You need to be in a stage and in a theater, like, you know, snobby, snobby, whatever. I've got to tell you, I was blown away. I thought this was better than seeing it live on stage. I want to tell people that because what they did was such a great job because they did such a great job editing and doing all the things, but the close-ups really told us story. Because 
when they did Hamilton, it's so much music. It's so heavy on the lyrics, right? Your ear is working constantly. It's pronounced they're... nevy. <laughs> it's so nevy on the ear <laughs> that they did. They went with a very simple set and really simple choreography and simple costuming, which is brilliant, which is why I don't think you have to see it. So to see it on the screen and see the facials and really see the expressions going, I think it's up a notch. Blown away. I'm now a bigger Ham fan than ever. Which, by the way, did you know Hamilton the Musical tweeted something of mine when it was uh, big in New York? So, like, I love this whole thing. I did not I'm, know that. What did you say? My daughter, when she turned seven, she's 10 now, we got her hamsters. And she wanted two hamsters, so we got her two hamsters. And if you know the sisters, the Skylar sisters in Hamilton, they're named Angelica, Eliza, and then the third one is cute because the whole time she says, and Peggy. <laughs> And then what does the third one say? Ann Peggy. Like she says it like that's her name, Ann Peggy. Mm -hmm. So Kana being seven named one of her hamsters Eliza and in the second one, Ann Peggy. And so it was, it was like put all over, the, like my friends were all obsessed about it and I have a lot of friends in Broadway. And so they all tweeted about oh, it. Oh, I have Hamilton a lot of friends in Broadway. Retweeted oh. it. And so that was really cool because I thought that was really awesome. So I've got it. I'll have to send it to you. I'm, you I'm mad that notes. I'm mad at your seven-year-old. I'm I'm mad that it's she had cute. a hamster and she didn't name it Hamilton. <laughs> <laughs> like cousins, Alexander and Hamilton. <laughs> okay, but her cousin's hamster was named Hercules. So after Hercules Mulligan. Thank you so, for uh, adding to the story with that thing that meant nothing. So <laughs> Um, who, who is your favorite character in like I, you're all fancy we're just talking about the movie now because nobody's cool enough like you to see it live um <laughs> oh, in the a theater lot seen, a lot of people have seen it that is uh, no one that listens to this nobody has enough money um so uh who is your favorite character in Listen, yeah. in the movie version hey, i'm sorry jonathan groff is a genius he played king george he was my a son loved king george my oh. seven-year-old watched every minute with us except oh, for a couple times on. where we kicked him out of the room um yeah, yeah. for reasons well, and this was actually better than on stage it actually was uh, believe it or not it was actually trimmed down but um censored but jonathan groff i've been a fan of his since he was on glee and he's phenomenal but he takes that king george character and just runs with it. He's so funny. Oh my gosh, he's brilliant. The drooling, I didn't know he drooled. Like, you know what I mean? I had never seen that, that piece of it before. And just, uh, he's just fantastic. So he's, he's my favorite. He's such a reprieve because it's a, it's a tough, it's a tough show. There's a, lot of, there's a lot going on in that show. So Jonathan is, he's just fantastic. So he's my favorite. It was what great. about I, you? I, I loved Burr, uh, Burr's oh, character. Burr's, that, that, that guy was so talented. It was Leslie's great. amazing. Um, yeah. All right. Oh, Leslie. I know Leslie. We go way back. I don't know Leslie. <laughs> we went to high school together. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we got to talk about the content of the show. There's a couple of things that really stuck out to me. Sure. Um, and one of them was, was Aaron Burr. And I, and I liked that. I mean, so the whole time, um, Aaron Burr's, like, his, one, of, one of his primary characteristics is that he's waiting. He's waiting. He's waiting. He's waiting his time. And uh, and uh, I keep wanting to say Lynn Minrow Miranda uh, Hamilton. <laughs> Hamilton. Is, is, is like uh, I'm not throwing away my shot. Like I, I'm I'm going for it. Here's my opportunity. I'm going for it. And that's that's one of the reasons that they're so opposed. And the one thing from Burr, and it's interesting to like learn something from the guy who's the villain in the show. Kind of. They, they, I, I like how they play with that at the end, and we'll talk about that in a second. But he's like, I'm not standing still. I'm lying in wait. And and I I, I like that a lot because a uh, like e even just like in our spirituality or with, with, um, you know, with everything going on in our world, it's like, uh, you need to, you need to stay uh, constantly be talking. You need to shut up. It's like, like, I, I, don't, I don't know what it is. Like, and like, I, I felt that it's like, I'm, you know, people are being accused of not saying enough or standing still. And it's like, I, I'm not, I'm not, I don't, I can't speak for anybody else. It's like, I'm not standing still. I'm, I'm, I've done stuff fine, but it's like, I, I'm lying in wait. Like I, I, I'm, I'm biding my time. I, I'm, I'm, I'm listening. I'm learning. I, I'm, I'm seeing the situation. And when the opportunity comes, I'm going to take that. And I thought it was interesting for our time now, but then even just spiritually, it's like a prayer can look like you're standing still. Um, like uh, being patient and waiting on the Lord can look like you're just standing still, but it's really, it's like, I, I'm, I'm lying and wait, like I'm waiting for the Lord to come to reveal something, to do something new. I thought that was interesting. No, I think that's great. I think, you bring up a really good point that all of a sudden taking a pause or pausing is offensive. 
And I think as a nation, we need a pause. Like that's kind of our problem is that we are. Oh, we got one. The world stopped. (laughs) (laughs) But isn't that fascinating that so much is happening as the world has stopped. And it's as if, I mean, there is no mistake that the world had to stop for some of these things to happen. And I think there's so many lessons that we're unpacking right now with everything that's going on, but a pause is not a bad thing. And I do agree with you. Like the whole talk less smiled more like Burr brings up a lot of good points. Um, and maybe not in the, in, you know, and these are characters, so it's not in the extremes of these characters, but there's some really powerful things that he says and that his example shows. It's so and funny because I, I'm so, I'm so, like on that in particular, I'm so much more a Hamilton than a Burr. So oh, like yeah. the, the Burr side like is intriguing to me. Cause exactly. it's like, here's the opportunity. I'm going to keep working. I'm going to keep pushing. Like we talked about that with the, with the vacation and it's just like, I, I'm going to, I'm going to wait and I'm going to, I'm going to be still. And that's, that's hard for me. I um, can't be Burr. It's yeah. the most difficult thing on the planet, but that's because you and I are the same. I we can't are. do it. Yeah. Um, the, the next thing that the ending was so intriguing for me. And like, Fantastic. it's one of those, it's one of those things that was funny. Cause it was like, spoiler alert. Like they spoiled it. And it's like, uh, right at the beginning, it's like, and I'm the man who shot him. Like Bert, we it. knew that he, and it's like, you know, I learned that from history class, but there's some things from history. Like, like I just don't remember. Right. Like a lot of things were information that I either, I was like, oh yeah, that's right. But I had to look some stuff up. It's like, what years were Washington president? And what years, right. you know, like all that kind of. Like How long first... was he president? Right. Was he president? 12 years? Like, yeah, I exactly. So I, 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 like, I was what? like wikipedia as I was going. Sure. Um, but the ending, really was, the, the ending was so interesting because I was like, um, as Burr is talking, after, after he shoots Hamilton, which is interesting because he, he taught, Hamilton taught his son that when they, whenever they went into the duel, like there was like gentlemanly rules about this. And he told his, his son, he's like, the whole time, he's like, I'm not throwing away my shot. And he told his son to literally throw away a shot, the shot from the gun, to point it up in the air. And if the other man's a gentleman, he'll stop too to, to keep his honor. And that man didn't do it, and his son died. And yeah. I thought so much about how Hamilton was like, his whole, like, about the principles inside of him. He's like, I'm not throwing away my shot when it comes to opportunity, but when it comes to, like, being a principled man, like, I'm, I'm not going to, to just shoot this man. I'm not going to have that on my conscience. I'm literally going to throw away my shot. So he, he shoots up in the air. And I thought so much of, like, the, the scene with his son was right before it. And it's like, he's a man of principle. But I could see myself, even if I was a good enough man to have that principle, I'm not going to shoot this man in a thing. Uh, and I told my son to do that. If I watched my son die because right. of what I told him to do, right. I would probably change what I did. Right. Why would you do it? Yeah. That, right. Isn't that fascinating that they died the exact same way, right. the exact same spot. Right. And like, then that's insane. He, he yeah. ended up like he didn't change his principles because, something, because something bad happened because of that principle. And that was so that- intriguing to me. And it, yeah. and, and it hit me because I'm like, I am a man of principles, but if something that significant happened, would I keep my principles? It was interesting. Yeah, but Taylor, here's the thing. He, he thought better of Burr. Like he, you know what I mean? And you gotta, you gotta understand that this wasn't some stranger to him. This was someone who he had plenty of contact with and lots of communication. So he assumed something about this other man. And that's what it was. I think it was the familiarity of Burr that he just assumed, well, Burr is the one that, like what you've said this whole time, he's the pause guy. He's right. the one that waits. So, you know, I think he just, I don't know if he even thought about it, like to think, not to do it because i think he just assumed we're going to do this thing and we're going to move on and whatever and i I bet you i don't know but if he had a stream of consciousness i bet he was shocked i bet hamilton was really shocked and and here's here's the thing like stream of consciousness with burr right after right after he shoots hamilton do you know what he went to do like he he, he's doing all of these he's doing all these things and like the, the the line of what he says blows me away he said i'm not leaving my daughter an orphan yeah. He's like, that's why he took the shot. He's like, I, I'm, I don't want to leave my daughter an orphan. And I thought about the perspective so much because I don't think I've ever talked about it on the show, but I talked about it with, with a group of guys that I was in a Bible study with. And we talked so often about like, whose lives mean more. And, 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 and this is like from a subjective point of view. It's like, would I, like an example is, would I risk my life to save a random stranger knowing that I would die and leave my wife and kids o- orphaned and widowed. Right. Mm-hmm. And like, I, I, that's hard for me to think about right? because I think I would hesitate because I'm like, I could save this person, but if I'm dead, then my wife and kids are by themselves. Right. So subjectively, 
my wife and kids' lives mean more to me than this person's. And it doesn't really have anything to do with my life to me. Does that make sense? Right? Yeah, that makes complete sense. Um, so that, that makes it hard for me. But like, that's what Burr is dealing with. Subjectively, he's like, I'm not going to leave my daughter an orphan. And then what do we see when he shoots Hamilton? We see the kids and the wife mourning Hamilton's kids and wife. Like he made his wife a widow and his right. kids an orphan. And like, it, it just brought back that thought for me where it's like, the subjectivity of who we care about and who we would lay our life down for and what we would do to protect those people. It's just a fascinating thing that I, that I, I can't shake. No, there's a lot of layers to it. And I think it also like ogres. To what, uh, exactly. Like an onion. What Burr thought of Hamilton. I mean, he, he thought he was, he thought he was, you know, this rebel in this untamed wild, whatever. And so of course he assumed Hamilton's going to shoot me, especially with the whole glasses. You know, that's a big part of this whole thing that Lin-Manuel found out was that Hamilton put on his glasses and it's actually on the statue. They have a statue where they, um, where their duel happened. Well, if it hasn't been ripped down, sure. That's true. That is true. (laughs) But what's fascinating is that, I don't know if you know this, but Burr actually, um, they, he left and he went and ate breakfast, um, with his brother-in-law and actually didn't even tell him what happened that morning. Yeah. So Burr was a very interesting character and, you know, and Lin-Manuel found out a lot. I mean, he's not a historian, but the book that he based this musical on is really fantastic um, and why it came to be. And it's definitely worth people's time, especially if you want to listen to an audible, but you learn a lot and these people are very flawed. In my opinion, though, I think the real story and I love, I don't know if you noticed, but it's, it's just called Hamilton. It's not called Alexander Hamilton. And I would make the argument, a lot of people have, this is an original thought, even though I didn't get it from someone, I know other people think this, that the real story is Eliza. And, you know, and her name is Eliza Hamilton. And when you watch this woman, and when you see the supernatural things that she does as a human being and lives through, and then when you hear the end of her story at the end of the musical- she is the heroine. I mean, it, it is her story is really what yeah. it is. And like, there's even hashtags. that's like Eliza tour and things like that, because she is, she's the unsung Yes, hero. it's good. But we have to wrap up. I keep trying to signal you to stop. It's great. She's great. Anyway, she's, she's, she's tremendous. Great. That, that twist she's at the, the end was, was phenomenal. Um, the, the, the thing I wanted to close with was uh, what, what the last thing, one of the last things Burr says, he's like, I, I finally realized that the world was wide enough for Hamilton and me. Like yeah. the world was big enough for these people who were dia- diametrically opposed. Um, so as we find our world diametrically opposed in so many different ways, like there's, there's room enough for the both of us stop shooting guns at people and, and, and shooting barbs at people on, on social media. That's it for me. I'm Taylor Schroll. That is Olivia Newton-John slash Olivia Harrison. I'll be back next week. Say it. Oh, uh, Olivia, we're, we're just about done here. We mentioned it in the show, but I wanted to remind people that it, this little fledgling ministry that we have that we've been doing for five years, but it's only been official for one month. Um, <laughs> we need your financial support. And by yours, I mean literally yours, Olivia, but you already donate. So <laughs> I do. Uh, I give a lot. P- people can go donate at ForteCatholic.com slash donate. We are a 501c3. It's official. It's all tax deductible. Um, so why don't you convince the people why they should go donate, Olivia? Well, help me out so I don't have to give as much. I mean, for the cry, I mean, I've got kids, so <laughs> <laughs> let me keep some of my money, you guys. Let's share it. Yeah, so she ability. can buy a third mansion. <laughs> yes, exactly. So Taylor will stop making fun of me. No, Taylor deserves the money. He works very hard yeah. and he puts out wonderful content. And underneath it all, he actually cares. So Give him your cash. I thought I was doing better at hiding my caring. (laughs) ForteCatholic.com slash donate. Thanks for the support. God bless. See you next week. Bye.